Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf here at Second Swing Minnetonka with a very special guest because it's a very special day. We've got some new clubs from Titleist. This is Tom Fisher, and uh, Tom's here to talk about the Titleist GT drivers. So um, obviously it's very exciting for us at Second Swing with uh, some new Titleist products out there to look at, to feel, and to test. Mm -hmm. And so big day, GT drivers. Um, so Tom, let's just kind of start at the very top level here. You got a new kind of couple new letters there, right? Yeah. We TS over the last several years. Now we've got GT. So mm -hmm. tell us about the story of GT. Yeah, GT. Um, brand new name, brand new construction. Um, GT stands for Generation Technology. And that really is what it is. Um, we believe this is such a big leap for us in performance um, and in innovation as well. Similar to how TS was with mm -hmm. prior gen. Uh, this is a bigger leap. Not only, like I said, performance and construction. So Generation Technology and... Uh, you're going to see a lot of speed, a lot of consistency. Um, we're just thrilled. We couldn't be happier with it. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I mean, after the TSR series, mm -hmm. in the last couple of years of how that's went and how much golfers have loved it, I'm like, I, how can Titleist be better here? Yeah. So we got GT, two, yeah. three, four. That's, that's, that's kind of similar from the past. But right. so let's kind of dive into the models here. And, and yeah. you know, what are we talking about with GT2, GT3, and GT4? Yeah. yeah. So. With all three models, we're all about this total driver performance. So what we're trying to do is optimize all levels. From a positioning perspective, you know, two, three, and four, you know, golfers out there are, are going to be familiar with the positioning. We're not really changing how the two, three, and four mm -hmm. are versus one another. So TSR two, three, and four are very similar as it relates to the positioning and the performance in terms of how they go one against one another. But the construction and the overall performance is, is leaps and bounds ahead. Like I said, brand new construction, using materials that we've never used before. Um, so it's big. So in all three models, we're introducing our new seamless thermoform crown. So this is all about you know, weight savings and really using that discretionary mass in order to obviously eke out all that performance. Um, it's seamless as well, which you'll also notice. Um, with other, you know, other multi-material drivers out there, there is a seam, and right. that's just not what we're, we we want here at Titleist. Mm. And I think um, I think some of your your associates yep. couldn't believe that there was a seam underneath the right. uh, underneath the crown. So you know that is something that's really really important to us. So making sure that we have this seamless thermoform crown is really really important to us. Um, we've got improved arrow on all three models as well, um, and then this seamless thermoform crown has a brand new material that's never been used before in the industry. So this is why this has taken six years in the making. Um, we really kind of, you know, searched the planet to find the right material that gives us the look, sound and feel that mm. we want. Um, it gives it that metallic sound. It doesn't give you that mood, muted sound like right. other multi-material products do, which is really, really important to us. Um, and they all have what we call in the split mass construction, which is allowing us to use all this discretionary mass and split it. So moving weight back in the driver that like, gives a golfer stability and, and a good MOI properties. But then if you can take the rest of the weight and really push it low and forward, that is where you just unlock so much more performance. Club head speed, ball speed, better launch and spin rates, better consistency across the face on launch and spin and ball speed. So it truly is really unique technology, innovation, and all of those are in, in all of our models. Wow, you're, I mean, I, I think the viewers here are probably salivating and trying to, you know, really trying to get their hands on these things. So um, one thing I noticed too, a lot of the, you know, other team members today that have been able to talk about the products and also see them and look at them, the GT2 and GT3 seem to look the same. So what went into that for you guys and why over the last, you notice it a little bit with TSR2 that it mm -hmm. kind of got a little more compact yep. and now it's almost like they look the same from a dress. Yeah, we've always kind of, we described our TSR2 model as kind of a modern shape. So it was a bit more rounded. And it, th th that driver was of course about, you know, forgiveness across the face. And the GT2 is no different, but we saw a lot of players want to go into the TSR3 um, in, in the current generation. Um, not necessarily, yeah, performance was there, but it's such a beautiful shape, right? Yeah. It's more what we call traditional, more of a pear shaped. And we kind of wanted that to kind of melt into the, the two models. So yeah, we've made the GT2 more that traditional pear shape. So when you put the club down on the ground, you won't really be able to tell the difference. So now you can really choose a driver purely on performance, which we're mm -hmm. thrilled about. And lastly here, as we start to kind of get into our testing, um, for a reminder for golfers, viewers, and of course our fitters is that you guys didn't really change anything in terms of specs necessarily, right? Everything is the same as, as far as 
available lofts, and then there are some different shafts incorporated too. That's yeah, the yeah. Difference. So positioning and everything like that, and, and in terms of like profiles, lofts and dexterity that are available, no real difference, all the same, you know, weighting adjustments are the same. So how much weight you can add or subtract yep. with our sure fit system, very consistent. Uh, you'll notice obviously in the three, we have changed where the sure fit track weight mm -hmm. is. So it is more forward. Um, and that's by design, as I was talking about that split mass construction, uh, we wanted obviously that weight push low and forward. And we've made a lot more sleeker, you know, more, more traditional design in terms of it's like more of a, a window closed track system that just makes it obviously a lot cleaner look. Um, so yeah, and then obviously in the four, you've still got the fore and aft weight positions. Yep. That, and what we had in the TSR four was when you move the heavy weight in the aft position, so in the back position, we kind of called it like a mini three, like a 3.5. Well, this is going to have a lot more adjustability now because this actually moved the weight back. It turns it into like a mini two. So gives you a bit more stability, wow. you know, a good launch and spin rate that gives you a little bit more of a gap between having that weight forward and back. So we believe that's going to maybe have a be more, have a better option for some golfers. So really great lineup. Um, two is being used a lot on tour more than we've actually, you know, had in prior versions just because of the shape. Uh, we've got a lot of contracted on non-contracted players in this product. Um, there's a few more twos on tour right now. Uh, Interesting. Out of this uh, wow. uh, last two events, certainly the Open and then the Travelers, which we just had. Um, so, yeah, two and three are going to be really hot out the gate. So. Awesome. Well, we're going to do some testing of our own here. We're yep. really excited about this. Of course, our entire team, as you saw today, mm -hmm. is also very excited about it. So, Tom, thank you for joining Titleist GT Drivers. We're about to hit him right now. Yeah, enjoy. Here's a good one. Yep, a little off the toe there. Start. Interesting. Uh, curious to see how that how that goes because if it was off the toe, yeah, definitely came back for you. Mm -hmm. So now you played Jake TSR. Yes, yes so, absolutely. So this will be a pretty good comparison of kind of seeing where Titleist has jumped to mm -hmm. from TSR to this is now the GT2 we're starting with. Yep. Um, that's this is actually cool. the GT3. Oh, is it the GT3? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect. You know, I have absolutely loved my TSR. It has done everything I could ask a driver to do. Yeah. I quite honestly told the Titleist guys, I don't know how you can make this any better. Yeah. Um, and then we got to test this a little while back, and they did. I mean, yeah. this this driver is phenomenal. Yeah. It's actually funny because I made that comment because that was one of the things they've said is mm -hmm. it, with some of the true pros, they can't yeah. tell GT2 and GT3 apart. Mm -hmm. I really thought that was the No, yeah, 100%. GT3, whatever. They it's, look a lot more similar than same, in years though. past. Definitely a lower ball flight here. Yeah. So you play the TSR three. Correct. Right? I play it kind of a little higher lofted than this. Okay. Got you. Um, I don't launch the ball super high, which is why I'm really intrigued to try the two. Yeah. Because it has a much cleaner look than, or I should say, a much more traditional look than I've, than they kind of have in the past that yeah. I like the look of. Okay. It launched a little higher and they lowered the spin on us. So. Yeah. I mean that's a good combination. Mm -hmm. right? There's a good ball. Got that one a little higher there. Yeah, that's a good ball. That'll play 10 times a week. Yeah. <laughs> 10 days a week. I'm right? going to guess it didn't have too there's much more spin than, on that. There's not 10 days in a week, but there, that'll play. It had 1673 on the spin, yeah. but it's, you know, right down the middle. Mm -hmm. Do you typically play a draw? Is that your kind of that, your, your go-to shot shape? That is definitely my ball flight. It's playing the power draw. Yeah. I kind of like that, you know, it, it's... It's certainly a low draw, and it is moving a lot, but mm -hmm. it's not the type that's diving out of the sky. No, that 100%. You, you might see a little bit. It's certainly got some movement, but it's mm -hmm. definitely in place, though. I mean, you're absolutely yeah. in the fairway with all these. And, I mean, this year I've just kind of been playing that big draw because that's what I got right now. Ooh. Look at that one. Tried to hit that little cut there. Tried a little cut? Well, it certainly worked. Look at that. You should play a cut. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Well, the, the GT3 can do both, as, yes, we can, it can. as we can tell here. That, that was great. This is a shot shaper for sure. All right, let's look at some numbers here with All the right. GT3. We got, so a, an average spin, now granted you were kind of hit basically four yeah. sort of low draws, mm -hmm. they had the cut at the end there, but the average spin was 20.59. Yeah. Um, you ended up at an average total of 288.6. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a, a, 
what are you what are you seeing so far from this? Again, this is five swings right away. Yeah. You know, haven't done a ton of testing, I guess, or mm -hmm. swinging today. But yeah. what do you think so far? I mean, I would honestly say forgiving. I do not feel like I put the best swings on yeah. that. I've been dealing with a little back issue lately, but I mean, 290 surprised me on that. Yeah. I feel like I'm swinging nice and easy, just trying to just get him out there a little bit and getting 290 out of that still, I'm very yeah, impressed. On average, with it, again, a couple of shots that you felt mm -hmm. like you didn't quite catch perfectly. Yeah, 100%. Um, your average swing speed is about 109 today. So, yeah. I mean, yep. I know in the past testing, you've been well into the 110s. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we got some good numbers mm -hmm. from that so far, though. No, I mean, I would say, like, look and feel wise, when I first saw this driver, I could not tell that it was a multi material driver. I mean, they yeah. did a phenomenal job of hiding the look. It feels very, very similar to my TSR3. They kept the things I liked and just found a way to improve it. I like that. I like that. All right. GT, should we go GT2 here? Yep, let's do it. All right. So GT2. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like we talked about already, I don't, I can't tell a difference. It's, it's hard here. to tell. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've been playing a TSR3 for the last two years. This is maybe a hair bigger. Yeah. But I mean, you compare that to the TSR2. This is a much smaller footprint fantastic look and I've, I've hit this before it, it's forgiving yeah all right let's see what it has here there's the oh, draw again good. yep let's let her go oh yeah 284.5 on that one okay. definitely a little bit of a miss there too because you got 144 smash yeah it was a little but tubby. clearly it's i mean i'm looking at where the ball ended up it's right on basically yeah, no, on I mean, top I'll, of the center line i'll so. take that all day for it yeah Just got underneath that. Yeah, a little high face. Yeah. Yeah, so that one, it was interesting. You, uh -huh. you definitely caught that high on the face. I can, see the, I can see the ball mark on that one. Yeah. Um, but 281 on the total. And so it was a 139 smash. So I mean. Wow. But it still went out there 281, 27 16 spin. So it did pick up a little bit of spin, mm -hmm. which typically it's weird because that high that high face shot typically has a little Usually bit more drops spin. But a that bit one. More. Gained, gained you some spin that the ball mm -hmm. would stay in the air a little yeah, bit longer and carry farther. So that, not, not too bad. That's I mean, very impressive. Oh, that's ripped. That felt pretty good. That's ripped. The uh, golfers on the other tee are probably watching <laughs> that one roll out there. That is the shot shape I love there. Yeah, 301.3 on that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, another nuke. And that was off the heel. Was it? It doesn't yeah. look like it. No. I'm going to be curious to see what happens here. Okay. Wow. You said that was off the heel? Uh huh. The spin's 21 24. I hit it right here. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is <laughs> That's shocking. That's crazy. 21 24 on a heel ball like that. I mean, it still went 290. So. Jeez. You going to switch to the GT2 or what? Uh, I think it might be. All right, let's get one more good one here. One after that one. Yeah, turning a little bit. Interested to see this total distance there. Yeah, you definitely went after that one. 165 on the ball speed, 294.6 on the total. Okay. So I think, again, this is, we're, we're you know, light sample size here. Mm -hmm. we, we have some, I know you have some more testing to do to see 100%. if you're gonna actually switch and stuff. But um, all right, so here, fascinating stuff. 290.2 on the average total. Okay. Spin was 2112, so a little mm -hmm. bit more spin yep. than the GT3. That makes sense. Um, you see, and it was interesting because actually you you actually missed a little bit more, right? We had a couple more kind yeah. of bigger, you know, I don't want to be too mean about it, but a couple of No, yeah, I definitely there, missed it a couple times. And so it's funny, though, you actually hit that one on average farther. Yeah. Which is uh, kind of crazy. So mm -hmm. um, the GT2 and GT3, uh, I guess after hitting both of those, we'll, we'll hit a little bit of the GT4, and that's yep. a completely different driver mm -hmm. in its own right. But what's your breakdown of those two? I mean, I would say this, for me, has the lower spin benefit that I saw on my TSR3, yeah. but with way more forgiveness. I mean, I did not put the best swings on that, and averaging 290 and where those balls went, yep. I'm pretty happy with that driver. Uh, the TSR3 did not feel unforgiving. I mean, like I said, swing's not super yep. dialed today. I'm not hitting it perfectly centered on the face. I felt like I was basically just chipping that TSR3 out to about 288. Right, yeah. I mean, it's, and you can see on the dispersion here, it's actually funny because you were hitting most of them so straight that mm -hmm. it, 
it is pretty zoomed in on the map here. Okay. It's funny, but um, yeah, we've got similar ovals there. Uh -huh. um, you got a little bit of that kind of left uh, sort of draw showing up a little yeah. bit, but. Was this one higher in flight? I mean, I know that I had that oh, one, that one real the high, but. The, yes, the, the GT2 was 85 feet average height. Yeah. 77 with the GT. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, it's also a little bit launching a little bit higher, 12.5 mm -hmm. to 12.1. So yep. it's really doing what Titleist. A hundred percent. It's a little higher happen. launching, a little higher spinning, but a lot more yeah. forgiving. A lot more forgiving and uh, and still, a, a you know, it's still a beast though. You still yeah, got absolutely. a bunch of distance oh, out of it. Um, all right, let's try the GT4 here. Again, this is a very niche driver, yep. um, but we'll see what we'll see what it does here. Let's do it. All right, so what do you see with that one now? Does it appear even smaller than the GT3 and GT2? Absolutely. I mean, this is definitely the most compact model. You can kind of see the, the bulge on the top yeah. of it a little bit more. This is a very curved driver, I'd put it that way. Yep. Um, it doesn't look hard to hit. I mean, I've definitely had drivers in my hand that look a lot more uncomfortable than this. Yeah. But it is definitely the least forgiving of the three models. This is geared for someone that's really trying to knock down spin, usually a very high ball speed player. But I mean, there are also people that struggle with that kind of high right miss. Right. That I put them into something like this, set it closed, to try yeah. and get that face angle a little bit more shut. And it does help knock that spin down a lot, giving them a little bit more total distance due to the reduction in spin. While they might not get as much ball speed because it's less mm -hmm. forgiving, they end up with a longer total shot. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then also there's worth noting too, there's the adjustable weighting on the sole there where you can you yep, know, move 100%. the heavier weight in the back and it actually plays, you know, what Tyler's tells us is a lot like a GT two and a half. Yep. Is kind of what they're saying with that. So we'll t today we'll just test it as is here. Mm -hmm. um, but you know we'll do some further testing with that to see exactly how much adjustability that is in the future. Absolutely. Huh. A little open there. What do you think about that? I mean, it felt pretty good. Yeah. Just I wonder. I do wonder too if this driver does have a little bit more. I don't want to say fade bias, but a little bit. It does. I mean, it, right it sets up a little bit more open. Yeah. And these kind of pro style drivers, they like something that sets up a little open because they can really control the face as much as they want. Yep. That was set pretty good. Yeah, that looks awesome, actually. There is that tendency to go right, but that mm -hmm. was, I mean, 302.4 on that one. Okay. So as you talked about a little bit too, you said like, you know, with this driver, mm -hmm. you know, the players with swing speeds kind of in your caliber or even faster are yeah. going to probably get farther maximum distance out mm -hmm. of it, right? 100%. Um, Cause it's, you know, there's a little bit more weight forward. Can you kind of connect a little bit more energy transfer there at impact if you hit yes. it good? Yeah, I mean, the faster you swing, the more spin you're gonna generate. So, I mean, there are some people where it's not even necessarily a swing issue. They're not swinging way across. They're not swinging way down. They just generate a lot of speed because of their spin rate. Yeah. This is a great place to go to get that yeah. under control. It definitely doesn't want to go left. Yeah, I mean, I I just watched you with the GT2 and GT3 mm -hmm. hit that, yeah, you know, that, that, draw was that kind of way. draw, that rope draw several times. And this one is just refusing to do it. But mm -hmm. that one, even that one, look how high and kind of right it was compared to most. Yeah. But that's 2020 spin. <laughs> and it probably that's didn't feel really like good. that. No. So 307.9 total on that one. Wow. Which is out there. This is going to be a fun dispersion look at because that, yeah. this TS, or the GT4 is going to mm -hmm. be like way out here. Yeah. That one I turned over a little more. Yeah, that one is straight. also awesome. I mean, I don't know what else we need to see from the I'll GT4. tell you what, this feels a it, lot easier to hit than the GT4. Or, or, or sorry, the, the TSR4. TSR4. The, this is probably the most surprised that I've been with any of these models thus far, to be honest. I mean, that one, it's a tight little draw. Yeah. It's dead straight. The spin on that one is 1591. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, the total is 299.8. Yeah. I... So, I know we only hit four, but I mean, we kind of have some good conclusions to mm -hmm. draw um, because that one is the farthest, which yeah. is not a surprise no. based on some of those shots. Also the lowest spin, mm -hmm. but despite that, it's also the highest flying for this test. Now, granted, yeah. I think a lot of that was, you hit it out to the right, you connected yep. a little bit better maybe. Face was more open, it launched higher, absolutely. But the fact that it was the highest, you know, in this particular mm -hmm. test and it the spun the lowest, it, I think it speaks to how it actually is a low spinning driver. Yeah, like, absolutely. It truly is. It's, uh, and then looking at more numbers here, you got the highest ball speed with this one, 160.6 mm -hmm. average, um, the highest launch as well, okay. which again is probably not exactly what you know, we were told was going to happen. And it was, no, yeah. you, know, you know, maybe a little missing a little bit mm -hmm. right was part of that equation. So um, yeah, what else, what other comments do you have hitting all three now at this point? I mean, I think I'm genuinely surprised about that one. Yeah, this surprised me quite a bit. I'm eager to do some more testing with this. Yeah. Um, 
which I mean, we will I, certainly do. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, on the YouTube channel. I really, I think that there's a perfect driver for everyone. Like, yeah. if you need a low spin option that's not going to go left, you got the GT4 here. If you want just a lower overall spin option, but something that's a little bit more neutral, a bit more forgiving, yeah. you can go that GT3. If you're looking for maximum forgiveness while still maintaining, and that, again, a lower spin rate, we go to that GT2. Yeah. I mean, TSR, the whole line, really was where I went for a low spinning driver. If someone came in struggling with that, I went there, and I mean, yeah, I can't tell you how many TSRs I sold you in the, in the last two years. They just were so easy to hit. They didn't spin. They had mm -hmm. tons of ball speed. They just went forever, and I cannot wait to get these in golfers' hands. Yeah, I mean, show you some great testing here. We'll wrap it up a little bit more on the final thoughts, but I think this has been a very, very good kind of first impression for us mm -hmm. here with the GT drivers. Absolutely. All right, Jake, testing complete there, the Titleist GT drivers. Um, we were very impressed, I think. Yeah. There was a lot of things that we took away from this that it's funny because, you know, so often we get the, you know, especially from Titleist where they, they come in and present the product mm -hmm. to the team and then they tell us, here's what you're going to, or you should expect to see. Yep. And then we test it like today and mm -hmm. it's almost exactly what they said. Yeah. Uh, so let's kind of break down who these models are for because, you know, there's three models for a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different golfers out there, a lot of different golf swings, but you made a comment there at the end of testing that basically any golfer out there is going to be able to find what they need in this series. Absolutely. So uh, GT2, let's talk about that one. Probably yep. going to fit the most golfers in terms of all the, I mean, there's the adjustability with the Sherford Hals and everything, but yep. probably going to fit most of the masses. I would predict that is going to be my most sold model for sure. Yeah. Cause I mean, most people coming in, we need more forgiveness. We need yep. more ball speed on a miss hit. Um, that's going to be the highest MOI of the driver. So it's going to help straighten things out a little bit. They lowered the spin pretty yeah, they did. significantly from the TSR two. Yep. So that's going to help a lot of the players that swing down on it or swing a little bit more across. Um, but I mean, even like better players, that, that look is going to look, yeah. or sorry, the shape of it's going to look a lot mm -hmm. better to your eye than traditional more max forgiveness drivers will. So I would definitely take a peek at that if you're looking for a little more forgiveness, but you don't want to give up the look that you're used to. Um, mm -hmm. In the GT3, I would say that's for a player that's looking for a little bit more reduction in spin, might be a little higher speed player than what would fit into that TSR2. Um, there's also the adjustability down there. Uh, so you can move that either based on strike location or shot shape. So if you put more mass behind the golf ball where you're hitting it, you'll generally generate a little bit more ball speed. And then you can also help kind of get that face to be more open, more closed by moving right. that center of gravity as well. Um, and then in the GT4, I mean, I'd say this is your spin killer. This is your anti-left. If you're someone that tends to miss out to the left or you need to reduce spin because you swing real hard, this would be a great place to go. It felt far more forgiving than previous generations of the four. I, when the TSI 4 came out, I yeah. kind of explained to people, it's like the blade of drivers. Like, yeah. if you hit it well, you're going to hit it super well. But if you miss it, it's, it's not going to feel great. You're not going to have a ton of forgiveness there. This, I think, is a big jump on the previous two models of that 4. So very easy to hit, super low in spin, and it yeah. really didn't want to go left. Right. I mean, if you're a, if you're a low spin player already, mm -hmm. you maybe want to lean towards GT2 or GT2. Yep, absolutely. Uh, two, but if you already generate a ton of spin and you're mm -hmm. looking for something that is still forgiving but yep. can manage that spin, that is a lot more viable option than mm -hmm. maybe the past you know four models of Titleist drivers. Absolutely. Um, and we were, I mean, I was blown away by Me that too. because you were hitting the sort of the high fade almost to the right, and mm -hmm. a lot of drivers that'll be you know 2,600, yeah. almost 3,000 spin, mm -hmm. uh, based on what I've seen from your game. And it was just barely over 2,000 yeah. a lot of the time. So um, great stuff from Titleist. GT drivers are now in the bays at Second Swing. So go get fit for yours. See what you're missing out on with mm -hmm. the Titleist GT drivers. Jake, thanks for joining today. Uh, great swinging. And uh, I'm, I know you're excited to get in the bay with these. Yeah, well. I'm very excited to get these in golfers' hands.